Grand Rapids property rights under the microscope. Fox 17 first told you about this home last fall. The owners were cited after hosting several events today. The city's zoning board discussed the code that led to those infractions and ultimately made a decision that will impact the entire city. And the only reason that we're standing up to this because we've been under um, scrutiny from a handful of neighbors for over two and a half years. A month long back and forth between the city of Grand Rapids and the owners of the Vanderjack Mansion. That we've had over 50 citations and all we've held is a family wedding and a family reunion and my mom's retirement party. So if that's excessive, I don't know what to, don't know what to tell you. The code that led to those citations was clarified Thursday by the city's zoning board. This would be an interpretation, again, that applies to all residential properties throughout the city. The board's decision is twofold. First, fundraisers can happen within two districts, mixed-use commercial and on properties approved for institutional use. Second, the time spent preparing and hosting private events at a residential home cannot exceed the time spent living there. And if they um, are using them primarily for events, and I think that that is then impacting the residential character of the neighborhood, and then we are left with the issue of having an event play, an event space in the middle of a residential neighborhood um, for which it's not designed um, to hold. This outcome isn't ideal for owners TJ and Max Budzinski. There, why are we under persecution for what it could be when nothing has been done? It's a residential home, it's zoned residential. We've been using it as a residence, it's our second home. We're there more than our primary house because we're working on it so much. <laughs> The Riverside Park neighborhood is torn. Some neighbors boast signs reading, Save the Vanderjack, Preserving a Historic Neighborhood Treasure. Others say, Shut down the Vanderjack, Keep our neighborhood residential. I have a photo of a box truck trying to get down Foster Street during the kids' food basket event. What happens when a first responder can't get down the street because of the on-street parking that they use? If someone has a Super Bowl party as that's been mentioned, that can be 20, 30 cars parked on the street. Who's to determine if that's a private event, whatever. So as a neighbor who's directly affected by this with a shared property line, I have no objections to what they're doing at the house currently. All of this started after the mansion hosted a book signing to benefit Kids Food Basket. The couple claims the city initially told them they could host four nonprofit events each year with the proper permits. Now they won't be able to do that. I guess that's the biggest setback for me, is that if we're only asking to open up our doors four times a year, is that excessive? I, I wouldn't think so. And, and I, that I we didn't... benefit a, a good cause four times a year? Hmm. How is that bad? The city couldn't comment on the issue, citing pending litigation. A judge was waiting to hear how and if the zoning board would rule on these issues. A court date has not been set. Reporting in studio, I'm Matt Whitkos. Fox 17 News.